There's one particular topic for the last 36 years that continues to be a, um, a point of uh, separation uh, between brethren and um, a lack of unity of, and it's a hotly contested topic, uh, one that I have studied deeply in just about every aspect and have come to realize that the truth is really very simple about it, and that is uh, the baptism into Christ for the remission of sins that that is the point at which uh, the blood of Jesus uh, comes and cleanses our sins through the working of God, not a working of man. So I wanted to share this study. It's about 13 objections to baptism for the remission of sins that are out there uh, in Christendom and in denominational circles. And this, is, uh, this has been presented by Brother Dave Miller, a PhD in the Lord's Church. And I thought it was so good and so concise and easy to understand. I thought I'd share it with everybody. And I, um, I back it up 100% in my faith and in my walk. So just so you know where I'm coming at. So let's get started. Objection number one. Jesus could not have been baptized for remission of sins because he was sinless. Therefore, people today are not baptized in order to be forgiven. They merely imitate Jesus' example. The baptism to which Jesus submitted himself was John's baptism in Matthew 3.13 and Mark 1.9. John's baptism was for the remission of sins, Mark 1.4 and Luke 3.3. 3. This truth is particularly evident from the fact that when Jesus presented himself to John for baptism, John sought to deter him, noting that, if anything, Jesus needed to baptize John, Matthew 3, 14. Jesus did not correct John, as many seek to do today, by falsely arguing that baptism is not for the remission of sins. Rather, Jesus, in effect, agreed with John, but made clear that his baptism was an exception to the rule. Jesus' baptism was unique and not to be compared to anyone else's baptism. Jesus' baptism had the unique purpose of fulfilling all righteousness, as we're reminded in Matthew 3.15. In other words, it was necessary for Jesus to submit to John's baptism first, to show his contemporaries that no one is exempt from submitting to God's will, and second, and more specifically, Christ's baptism was God's appointed means of pinpointing for the world the precise identity of his Son. It was not until John saw the Spirit of God descending on Jesus and heard the voice, This is my Son. John 1, 31 through 34 and Matthew 3 16 and 17. Of course, John's baptism is no longer valid, Acts 18.24 and Acts 19.5. John's baptism paralleled New Testament baptism in the sense that both were for the forgiveness of sins. But John's baptism was transitional in nature, preparing Jews for their Messiah. Baptism after the cross is for all people today. Matthew 28, 19. In Jesus' name, Luke 24, 47 and Acts 2, 38. Into his death, Romans 6, 3. In order to be clothed with him. Galatians 3, 27. And then added to his church, Acts 2, 47. We must not use Jesus' baptisms to suggest that salvation occurs prior to baptism. Mm 